I'm walking onto the basketball court. I feel the breeze. It's Marina del Rey, California. The sunshine. I hear the ocean. They have basketball courts on the beach there. I'm 135 pounds and bald. They're choosing up teams. They're talking sports. They're trash talking. The game begins. I'm feeling my rhythm. A little sweat's coming off my brow. And there's a two-on-one fast break, and the biggest guy in the court plows me over on my butt. Two guys run over. Are you okay? Are you okay? I lift my hands up, and they pick me up. I was more than okay. I was starting to feel whole again. We all get knocked down in life, in work, in family, in relationships. The key is to get back up again. That's our job. Now, I have three miracles and three very valuable keys that I'm going to leave you with today. But first, I've got to take you back to 1989. I know most of you weren't born yet, okay? <laughs> I know that. But I noticed a little purple spot on my cheekbone. I made excuses. I couldn't even figure out what it was. So I finally got into the hospital, and they biopsied it, and it took them weeks and weeks. Remember, we're in 1989. There are no cell phones, no internet, and barely any computer use. I walk into Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. They tell me I have stage 4 non-Hodgkin's T-cell lymphoma. I'm a deer in the headlights. I don't know what to make of this. I'm numb. Am I going to live? I'm 23 years old. I had no idea. I start doing chemotherapies. They don't work. I'm getting worse. Things get really dark. But first miracle. My mom had twins. That twin was a 1 in 24 thousand chance of being an exact match. Well, they blast you with chemotherapy. They blast you with radiation. They get your immune system down to zero. Earlier that morning, my twin sister, they extracted bone marrow from her hips. And this little bag of life comes to me, her bone marrow. They infuse it inside of me. Now we wait to see if it kills me right away. Or will it work? Will her immune system become my immune system and save my life? Yes, it did. I moved to California. We're back in California. I'm getting back my confidence, my physical strength, my mental toughness. And I meet the love of my life. Hollywood style. I get married at Shutters at the Beach. It was awesome. I have a lot to be blessed and grateful for. We start doing a lot of community service. I become a big brother mentor. This little boy, he's Ian, he's 10. Oh my God, we wrapped ourselves around each other. It's amazing. Mentorship is leadership. It's quite incredible. So I get promoted. I go to Silicon Valley. Life is great. Years are going by. I'm healthy. And I'm in Silicon Valley, and it moves fast. 2 plus 2 equals 200. It moves so fast. And my wife sits me down and she said, how many times have you been home for dinner this month? And I basically said, I don't know. She said, eight. She said, if we want to have a family, because we were talking about having a family, there's an article. I want you to read this article. It's about families that actually eat together. They stay together. And I wanted to be a dad. I really wanted to be a dad. So I've got to now take you back to 1989. Before I did one drop of chemotherapy, I was in the hospital for my first infusion, and this really wise doctor, he came up to me and he said, we're not doing chemo today. I said, you told me I'm going to die. I have aggressive non Hodgkin's lymphoma. He said, nope, we've got a field trip for you. Your liver function's too high. Field trip? He goes, we're going to the cryogenic center. Cryo what? What is that? Well, I soon learned it's the sperm bank. I had left a sample, and I forgot about it. Miracle number two. Eleven years later, frozen sperm becomes a beautiful, bouncing, miracle child, Emily. Our frozen kidsicle. <laughs> Amazing. 
amazing. Life is good. Life is sweet. Life is special. So everything's great. We moved the family to Michigan. My twin sister who saved my life, Miracle One, she's there. All the kids are growing up together. And I go in for my 50-year-old colonoscopy. My wife is holding my hand. I wake up from the anesthesia. And all of a sudden, the doctor has a very serious look. I said, hey, doc, is everything okay? I'm in great shape. I figured it was a formality. He said, no. He stopped me in my tracks. Lightning struck again. Stage three colon cancer. Back to chemo. More surgeries. Nobody deserves that. But I had to go through it. And I kept failing the chemos and failing the surgeries. And things are getting worse. A year later, I'm metastatic, stage four, colon cancer. The disease had spread to my stomach, to my liver, and to my bowel. Is all hope lost? Am I not going to see my daughter graduate high school? I did not know. But we're living in the digital world. There's online support. I'm investigating clinical trials and things that could possibly save me. I need a Hail Mary. And I got one. I did a surgery where they actually cut out all the cancer. They made a big cut from my chest to my pelvic bone. They split me open. They took out all the cancer they could see with microscopic glasses. And they poured hot chemo inside of me. They sealed me up. And they rotated me around like a rotisserie chicken so that it could kill microcell cancer. And so far, it's working. I'm three years, no evidence of disease. Amen. So what have I learned? What have I learned? Well, I learned that you have to be able to accept help. Accept help. People are there. They wanted to help me. And I need to learn how to accept help. The second thing I learned was that it's not in this world and in our lives of what we get. It's what you can give. And then lastly, whether it's cancer or life, it's a team sport. You rally the circle and you rally those troops. And that's, that's the point. So I'm going to give you three tips, three keys right now to leading a resilient life with hope. First, is you lift up yourself. Give yourself a scorecard. Where am I at health, family, business, life? And if you don't like any of those scores, you need to change. You need to change. And then once you're all set, we lift up others. There's so many other people that are in need or just to be cheered on or to be mentored. And what happens next? We become a force multiplier for good and positive change in this world. And it can be done. And that's a good life. And together, we will shine brightly. And we will shine so brightly, our light will carry around the world, and we will make this world a better place. And for that, I am grateful.